Yeah, okay. Uh, there is a big dilemma. There is a big dilemma because the best months to come for Camino weather-wise are... May and, and September. Oh, the weather is great, it's not too hot. Not, not too rainy. But there is one little issue. Everyone decides to go on the same dates. Crowds, crowds, crowds. No places to sleep, no places to eat, no places to get a good coffee. I mean, there is queue everywhere. Ah, so what to do? Where should I go for my Camino de Santiago? So in today's episode of our podcast, we're going to talk about... Weather, month by month. What are the best months to come for Camino de Santiago, especially having in consideration crowds. crowds. <laughs> and also we're going to talk about essential equipment for each of these months for a few different Caminos. Rain jacket versus poncho. Because the rain is something serious. And it's always there, even in August. And if the weather forecast fails, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about the importance of intention settings. Before the journey and meanwhile as well, which can not only enrich your journey outwardly, but also inwardly. And all of this from... Japan, from this beautiful park in an island in Japan. <laughs> because we come in tell us, so we walk in and we're going to give you a nice little walk around the park. Let's dive into it. Let's dive! March. March. What to expect in March? A March is an official start of the season. It's not really start of the season because the Camino is season all year long, but, but people kind of start inclined to start in March, a little bit. Yeah. Not many. Crowds? It's, there are less people doing, uh, doing Camino in March, but it's definitely rainy, rainy, Oof. it's cold. Oof. There are less people Oof, cold. and I don't depending, like cold. depending on the route, if it's less traveled, many accommodation might be closed as well. So for example, if you go for the less traveled Caminos, the Camino de Invierno, Camino Olvidado, or even the Camino del Norte, probably many of them will be closed. Yeah. On French and Portuguese Camino, there are albergues open 365. Yeah. Not all, but many. So you can get your away uh, in between the open albergues, hi. Mm -hmm. right? March is also a good month to start Via de la Plata ah. because it's not that hot yet. Mm -hmm. Spring is coming. Oh. Oh. So, but That's there a big one. you should take into account that the stages are longer. Uh -huh. So guys, pretty much what we want to say that you have to take few things with you once you're considering ah this Camino in March. First of all, you have to get yourself with the good shoes. Crossing the mountains and going through the lots of mud and rain, maybe... Yes. Maybe Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex for sure and maybe hiking boots. Yes. But like a light hiking boots, okay? Not too hard. Not too hard though, yeah. eh? Loa it's a good brand. And make sure you break them in before the Camino. Yeah, they require some joy and some attention. And another thing, another thing, um, some feather jacket. I love feather jacket. Yeah. What about the rain? Rain jacket or poncho? But we are going to talk about that later. <laughs> We're going to have a discussion later. Okay, should we go to April? Uh-huh. April. It's a bit of bright, no? Yeah. That's how I feel in April. The season is coming. The spring is kicking in. Yeah. And, uh, Ohayo gozaimasu. Ohayo gozaimasu. And here in Japan is actually getting to the autumn, autumn part. So what to expect from April, baby? April, the temperature, depending on the route you are, are much, much better. Uh-huh. <laughs> But we still expect rain. It can still be cold. Still be cold. For example, Napoleonic Pass, the special, the Pyrenees route on French Camino, the one that you start, that's one that everyone's afraid of. It's closed, mainly. Still rain, uh, still snow, still uh, snow. They say they open it since, uh, since the 1st of uh, April, but you 
have to have in mind that if the weather is good, they open. But if the weather is bad, you have to go around. So it depends on the year. It depends, it depends on, the, on the year. I, well, two years ago, I went, it was closed, so I had yeah. to go around. Not an issue, but just to let you know. People. People are starting coming more, no, in April. Plenty. Especially if there is the um, Easter week. Ah. Easter week is busy. If ah. it's in April. That's Easter, Easter week and April starts to be busy. This year, for example, uh, we were talking to some uh, hospitaleros and some people from the hospitality business and they said the April was the busiest of the busiest in, 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 history. in the history of Entire Camino. So have it in mind. The clothes for April. So I would go for Merino, Merino long sleeve because it can be cold but it also can be hot. So what's happening with the Merino? Merino will help you to uh, balance the difference in temperatures, right? Um, and the shoes? You can start wearing also trail running shoes. Gore-Tex if you prefer, because it's not too hot yet, but it will be raining mm -hmm. still. Mm, it will be raining still. But this is a nice time to go. Spring, I remember spring. It's uh, good to do the, the Portuguese, still Via de la Plata is good, uh, Camino Frances, cold and rainy. <laughs> Yeah, don't even come close to Camino del Norte or Camino Primitivo, Primitivo. if you don't like cold and, uh, and rain. If you're used to it. If you're used to it, it's a different story, you know. Just take our, uh, our guesses and our knowledge as something really subjective. Okay? Yeah, it's our experience. It's so... our experience, experience of our friends and people that write us and comment on our videos. Yeah, it's not the absolute truth. So don't take it 100% because then it's like, oh, this Camino. It's teller. your Camino, it's your Camino. This is our Camino and we are sharing our experience. Happy days. So the season is officially open. Should we go to May? Yes. Ha, 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 May, May, mm. May. Everyone loves May. Why? Because that's the good question. The weather is just good. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not cold. It's not hot. It's not raining that much. Oh, yes, and you know, everyone thinks exactly the same. That means that although the weather is beautiful, you will find thousands of people. Especially on the first week. Uh huh. And this is the big secret that we want to tell you any of the months you choose the first week or two are the all most busy ones people decide to come in the first few months because they oh i'm the gonna first go few days. i'm gonna go in may which days no one says seventh from seventh I always from say, the 17th yeah, yeah i always say oh from the first mistake so if you want to avoid the crowds probably what we would recommend you would be to start later even the second, third week of May, it's enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. just start from the second. And then, no, it's too hot when I get to Santiago. No. One week won't make a big difference. It won't be too hot when you get to Santiago. But you know what will make a big difference? If you start from the sixth and the third week and the fourth week and the fifth week, because we're going to have a, uh, our retreat. We have a retreat in Saint Jean Pierre de Port. Mm -hmm. And it will be four days retreat. We'll have a small group like family like. You will meet other people starting the Camino on the same day as you. And uh, if you're coming from far away like Australia, US, you can fight the jet lag. We'll have a lot of activities to get into the spirit of Camino. Yeah. Book your spot. Yeah. Just go down in the description, you'll find a link and you can write, sign up your interest. Ha. So, talking about that, what uh, shoes, what things you should take for May? Trail running shoes. Trail running shoes, like the one that we have on us today. We yeah. use them actually 365. Trail running shoes would be and absolutely we we, amazing. We don't have Gore-Tex because the weather is already good. They can dry faster than 
if they are with Gore-Tex. Mm -hmm. I don't even, you know, I've always take those those pants but with a zipper. Me so too. what actually happens if it's really, really hot, I'll take the zipper out. I put the cream on the legs because that's the that's the illness of the sunscreen. Sunscreen. <laughs> you, you see, this part of the leg is always black and burned, and this one is white. Ta -da! And um, and a part of this sunscreen is important thing to do. And remember, skipping the first week or two. It avoids you the crowds. The first 15 days will avoid you the crowds. Yeah. And it was crazy last year and I suppose the next year going to be the same. Yeah, I think it's going to get more and more, always busier and busier. Mm -hmm. Okay, should we go to... June. June. Let's go. Let's go. June, June, June. June. Ha. June is a pretty good month to go. It's especially the first part, yeah. which is still not the summer. Once you get to Santiago, it's going to be July. So maybe... Depending on the pace, <laughs> because there are people who do the whole French Camino in 20 days. This year we're starting in 27th of May, June. Let's just call it June. And we enjoyed it a lot. We enjoyed it because the big crowd has already passed. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of availabilities in the albergues. We were on our we, own. We, yeah, we, there were some albergues, we were only three. French Camino. On French Camino, which is the busiest, right? And the weather was really good, really good. Um, it's good, it's good. We will talk about the next month. To good to skip some, some moments of July, uh, to, to find this, this perfect moment before Spanish uh, Spanish people will start the yeah. holidays. After. So June is a pretty good month. Um, it's not too hot. The first part of June is really good. French Camino is good. Pre Portuguese is good. Portuguese is good. The English way is good. Then we can start also with Camino del Norte, which starts good and also Primitivo. I would not go for Via de la Plata. Mm, it's already that. too hot. Forget about that. No, forget until October, maybe. First thing I would take with me, it's a big hat. It's a big hat. Like you, like the one that you have. Like the one for uh, Japanese Camino that we have. And then lots of sunscreen because the, the weather, the, the sun also is not super hot. It can leave the stains on you forever. Yeah. Will it be raining? Yeah. Less. But always consider rain. So nice little poncho will do, guys. Anyway, we'll talk about ponchos later, later on. Later, yeah. Um, and the shoes, and the shoes, something light, breathable, something like trail runner shoes, and nothing Gore-Tex whatsoever. Avoid Gore-Tex because only will make your feet sweat a lot. Sweat and smell. And smell. smell. July and August, we can talk about them together. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Hey. Holidays. July and August. July and August. That's the proper holidays for everyone in this world, if you're on this part of the hemisphere. And have in mind that it's going to be hot. But the good thing about this month is also the days are longer. The daylight, it's like until uh, 9.30 p.m., like until 10 p.m., it's light. Uh -huh. I love that. So you can enjoy it so much. You so can walk longer. If you, like. if you like walking longer, but the, or you can start earlier because then the temperature goes high and maybe around 11, 12. You have a break around those hours. A break. You have to have in mind that for around the first part of July, it's the Spanish uh, festival called San Fermin, the one that you can find in Pamplona with the bulls running, with people shouting. And after the San Fermins are over, people start to flood on Camino de Santiago. So difficult to find accommodations as well. But still possible. Still possible. Still possible. Remember there are places that you can always find a place, the parochial albergues, they always open for you. Shoes. Shoes. The same as July. Same, the same as, as July. June. Is same as June. Breathable, not Gore-Tex trail running shoes. Uh, t-shirts, nice five strand t-shirts. Like the one we are wearing. Yeah. Uh -huh, it's gonna dry fast easily. And don't take a lot, you're not gonna need a lot. Even for the, instead of a sleeping bag, you can take a liner. 
Mm -hmm. no, how do you call it? Linen. Sleeping liner. Sounds like a good plan, no? Okay. September. 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 Mosquitos, mosquitos, mosquitos. Ah, this is universal. Mosquitos, mosquitos in Spain, mosquitos, mosquitos, mosquitos in mosquitos. India and in Japan. Beautiful this Japan, no? Yeah, apart from the mosquitos. We get into September, which is uh, statistically uh, second busiest or even the first busiest month of Camino de Santiago. Yeah. Because apart of spring, everyone likes fall. Yeah. And again, the temperature are good. It's not too hot. Summer is over. Uh, cold is not yet there. So it's, it's like, really good. Yeah, good it's month. like the summer is fading away really smoothly. So you can find a little bit uh, cooler temperature, especially during the nights. Not cooler, but cooler than the summer, which is still beautifully warm. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised people are coming on in September. Mm. And what's also special about September? The, the, the day, it's the moment that we speak. Kids are starting school? No, the retreat. <laughs> and, <laughs> That's true, we have a retreat, the second retreat of this year, which would be in September, starting from the 1st, right? Yeah, from the 1st of September. So again, in the description, if you're interested in the month of September, Come sign up for and the vibe retreat. in Camino before the Camino for the retreat. Uh, join us and get fully ready as useful tips, stretchings, morning meditations or... We'll have a lot of activities. We'll also prepare uh, months prior with Zoom calls. We have a special group for all the people from the retreat so you can post all your doubts. We can pack together for Camino. Uh, a lot of support from us and from Family. everyone. Family. Yeah? It sounds, it's like Italian family. La familia Camino Teles. La familia Camino Teles. So now is starting the moment where it might rain a bit more. Okay, a bit more, especially in the Galicia parts, especially in the parts of, uh, of the Pyrenees parts. You know, a little, bit, a little bit more of the rain. That's why it's everything's green. Mm. Shoes, I would stick to the same shoes. I would stick to trail running shoes. Maybe a longer sleeve of, of a merino wool. There is a, we discovered lately one really good brand. They are called the Icebreaker. Yeah. I love when Erica wears this thing, you know? I, don't, I didn't wear it yet. I uh. wear it only at night. Uh, but yeah, I love it. I, they also have cool designs, so... Sounds good, baby. Yeah. Anything we would like to add about this September? Remember th this old rule, skipping the first days, weeks of the month will help you to skip the crowd. Certified by Camino Teller. <laughs> Certified. Proved. <laughs> Proved by us. Okay, we have an October. October, let's go. October, October, October. Mm. October. Should I go in October? October, October. Yeah, maybe October. It's still a good time to go. But have in mind, many of the albergues finish at the last days of October. I think October is a tricky month because it depends on the year. Mm. Some year you have it really sunny, some, the, some year it's really rainy. So it's a bit of a gamble. Bit of a gamble. Mumble gamble. Mumble gumble. Maybe. That's a mumble jumble. <laughs> so um, uh, normally what people would do, they would start and, and they, they will just go. They don't mind. People who start in October, they just don't mind the weather. Don't mind the weather, yeah. You don't mind the rain, you get prepared well, you, you take your little hiking or text, maybe shoes, light hiking shoes. Then you get your special protections, umbrella, if you like. But no one for the sun, the one for the rain, and then easy to go. Is there many people there? Not so many, but I would say it's also a good month to go. Would you go? Yeah. If we wouldn't do one, two Caminos in 2024, probably would go in, in October as Why well. Why not? Eh? Yeah. Why not? Can I rest some sometime? When you're dead. <laughs> and then... 
I would talk about November, December, January, February, all together. Okay. What do you think? Uh -huh. Only for brave. November, December, January, February. Why are we putting them together? Because it's cold. It's cold. And, rainy. and it's rainy. And it's actually, can, you can find snow. Many of the things will be closed. Many accommodation will be closed depending on the routes. And for many people, that's the best month to come for Camino because there is nobody there. Rem yeah. Remember, albergues are open three, six, five, many of them, okay? You find them in Grañón, in Tosanto, It's many places. It's not only places. about Camino Frances. In many different albergues, you actually might not find this, uh, this privilege. But in Galicia, I think they open all the time. Mm -hmm. We met now here in Japan, the guy from Denmark on one of the rainiest days. And he was, this is, this is what you call rain? Yeah, he said, I don't have a rain jacket. I'm used to rain. This is what you call rain? This is rain? not rain. You've never been to Copenhagen before. <laughs> it's always rainy. So this is only for brave or for Scandinavs or, or maybe Canadians or maybe Irish. It's a beautiful month to come. And also, if you cherish the solitude, consider this uh, month. Yeah. And now? Maybe you have to walk longer to find accommodation, but... Ah, that's true. As long as you're prepared for it. Mm. And now, can we skip to the most important battle of this episode? Let's go to the other debate. Shall I take rain jacket or poncho we tried both the big battle of poncho versus rain jacket let's start i'm poncho i'm rain jacket functionality and coverage i cover all the body upper part and lower part and the backpack as well i only cover the upper part weight i'm more lightweight and more compact when you pack me i'm lightweight but maybe a bit bulkier Breathability and comfort. I'm made out of super cool materials, so that means that I can even have zippers underneath my armpits. I can breathe like in the Amazon forest. I can be breathable due to the loose feet, but I don't have so many features. Then... Durability and longevity. I'm tough and long life because my materials are simply better you know they're made of the really good quality fabrics ponchos are done with lightweight materials that might tear and wear out over time Ta! cost and accessibility poncho are more budget friendly and more available in stores so if you are tight in budget you can opt for a poncho I can be more expensive, but because of the feature and materials that I used to build me. So who wins here? I win. I'm budget friendly. I'm budget friendly. I'm budget friendly. <laughs> I don't like this part. Additional features. I have adjustable hood, extra pocket to put the things inside, as well as other extra features that may help and save your life. I'm more simple, I'm easy to use. <laughs> I win. <laughs> so guys, Regardless of who wins here, it's really, it goes to personal choice, personal preferences. We tried them both. We tried them, we tried the rain jacket in monsoon, in India, in Portugal, where it was raining a lot. I even tried the uh, trash bag and the poncho made out of uh, plastic. We tried them all. And we tried them all. And even a rain jacket, uh, made for monsoons and made for uh, made in america we try them all it comes down to our choice we prefer ponchos because the poncho can actually cover the backpack as well it covers everything but then you say no my backpack has a cover but the back on your shoulder the water goes and the bag 
get wet. At least that's our experience. Aha. That's our experience. So since we try ponchos, we are happy with it. We have to go back to monsoon season and see if that works. Poncho, poncho, <laughs> But we poncho. go for poncho. Also, mm. yeah, also another important thing that we would recommend is to have it in a to have it easily accessible. So if it starts raining suddenly, you can open the zip and take it. Like a ninja. Like a ninja. <laughs> Talking about ninja and samurais, should we talk about intention settings Let's go for and it. a nice and peaceful atmosphere? Yeah. Let's go. So Put down in the comments which is your preference, if it's the rain jacket or if it's poncho. And uh, why? <laughs> why? And if you're still not subscribed, consider subscribing. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Talking about the weather or about what happens if the weather forecast is mistaken or if there isn't too much rain or too much... Will it spoil my journey? Uh, we... You can make of your journey whatever you set up to be. So we thought that one of those important parts of Camino is definitely intention setting. And people say, what is intention? Mm. But you say not having expectation. But actually, setting intention is quite different from intention setting, right? Ah, explain me that, explain me that. Like, setting an intention is like having a compass, no? During your Camino, having a roadmap where to go, how to how to live the Camino, taking responsibility of how you want to live the Camino. Which the directions of this compass are based more of the values or inner qualities rather than goals and objectives. Yeah, they are more aligned with the with the values, right? What could it's it be? Like goals, for example, now that you are talking about goals, goals would be reaching Santiago de Compostela. The Fair intention enough. is choosing the mindset, the road, the route, how to get there. Like for example? So, like for example, I want to connect with fellow pilgrims. Ah, okay. I want to be grateful of each step I take in this journey. Mm, I want to find clarity on the Camino. I want to work on uh, some uh, past problem that I bring with me all these years and live in present life. This could be intention. Yeah. And intention setting is the process of looking into uh, those values, those issues or attitudes before the journey, writing them down, um, go, 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 going deep into them and finding the way how to place it and paint it on the canvas on the Camino. I think you should um, set them before the journey, definitely, but remind yourself daily. While you're walking during your Camino, remind yourself daily of your intentions. I like this practice when we learn from our Qigong master uh, that Every day in the morning you do the intention settings. You set the intention for the day, You right? live it, you live it. You, for example, have it. Today I'm going to gonna, uh, be happy with whatever happens to me. You visualize you it. Visual, you feel it inside of the body. It's, and then you're stepping into it. You step into your positive intention, as she called it. Ah, uh, yeah, really cool and, stuff. Um, it changes because, so much. Because you know that whatever you visualize, you work towards it and you manifest it. It's like this, uh, it's like a um, little um, alarm on your iPhone that says, hey, on this time and this time, you should to think about this. But you have it every day in the morning and before the Camino, you're just setting this straight direction of how would you like how, to live? Yeah. Is yeah. it not when and how and where would you like to go, but rather how would you like to do and it? And it's not having control, like trying to have control of the things around you because you cannot have control. It's letting go that control and taking responsibility of your action, whatever happens. Mm -hmm. 
out, yeah. out you of know, you. You know what I think, guys? Hold on, I'm gonna take, we're gonna go with us for this journey. I think that uh, you could use this chance, you can use this intention setting and you can write things down. You can write things down. I think writing them down helps you a lot. Um, and you know what happens to be that we uh, follow these values, we follow these ideas and we have them in our journal. The journal which is called beautifully... The journey within. I the love journal the for Camino de I Santiago. Love we do the intention settings for every journey we undertake. So we started this journey in Japan and we do it. In the airport, we are always writing them down our intentions for the, for the journey. So if you're coming for San Camino de Santiago, have in mind, there, there's a link just down in the descriptions with the journal. And it's not only about intention settings, but any other, um, any other subjects that we like to treat, uh, that we like to talk about on the Camino de Santiago. Like for they example- They will encounter like uh, compassion, empathy, the art of giving, silence, uh, fears, uh, spirit, we gratitude. From pilgrims to pilgrims, if you're wishing to get a really 100% of your Camino. Link get, in the description. Link in the descriptions. <sighs> Guys, after this video, you must have clear when to go for Camino. <laughs> and, and how to go around the park in Tokushima, because... <laughs> you, you see it all. You, you saw it all. You see it all. But this is the new form of podcast that we, that we think to do, walking podcasts, video podcasts. Answering all your questions, because these are all questions that we get asked a lot. So any other ones, write us down in the comments. You what do you want us to talk about? Write us email as well and simply be with us, share our journey, share the big smile, uh, make your choices. Remember, this is your Camino. Uh, no one can tell you this or that, this or that. This is your way and we are here. To and support you. To support. Big family. Ciao, chicos. See you. Adios.